Let's talk about uh, Cup 2. Well, I mean, a big story was Assassination Rogues, right? Like, we've seen CD tweeting about it and talking about it. You know, Assassination Rogues are just everywhere. I do think it was kind of obvious that Assassination was going to be so overpowered, to be honest with you. Like, a lot of the other stuff got nerfed and Assassination was already good and didn't really get any changes. So I think it was kind of obvious that Assassination was going to be OP. Certain teams, um, for example, where's Gordy? They managed to re-roll. Like, Chun-Li re-rolled Assassination with, like, two days. You know, he picked up the spec and practiced it, and then they actually played it in the tournament. North America, once again, was just a story of uh, Luminosity Gaming coming in with their RPP and kind of just farming everybody. Um, I, I think it was awesome to see the Silver Sentinels come in too, uh, playing their Rogue Mage Priest, um, kind of showcasing that. And it does feel like that's kind of the meta right now, at least in North America, right? There's like Rogue Mage. The meta right now is Rogue Mage and uh, RPP or RPS. So like the Golden Guardian and Luminosity Gaming, their stonks are extremely high right now. Those two compositions and RMP just seem like they're they're dominant, which is interesting because that feels very um, feels very Shadowlandsy to me, right? Like the end of Shadowlands was very similar in both regions, where it was like basically RMP and RPP, like Shadow Priest Rogue and Rogue Mage uh, were the two most meta things. So it's kind of like we're back to the end of uh, Shadowlands in a way. Um, I will say, I do feel like if, if assassination rogues get nerfed and I mean, that's a big if, cause I, I actually don't think we'll see ch any changes for cup number three. I think if we were going to see changes for cup number three, we would already know about them. So I think cup number three is likely going to be the exact same, um, as cup number two, uh, more than likely. Uh, and that basically means that these t teams have to figure out a way to beat R. I, I don't. I don't know if you can beat RMP. Like I don't. I don't know what beats RMP. I don't know what beats RPP. Like both those compositions are just super duper strong right now. Uh, I did want to say if we see assassination rooms get nerfed, there might just be like a new king on the block. Like warriors might just kind of like step up um, and own. And if that happens, maybe wizard comps get really good. Um, for example seems like the more warriors that are in the game the more you'll likely see things like mage lock or like ellie lock stuff like that but yeah so north america is basically a story of rmp and rps domination eu is the poggers are back right poggers are back in a big way one thing that i did like seeing was the evoker the evoker with rogue mage felt like it actually had insane synergy uh, evoker feels like almost a hybrid between resto druid and uh discipline priest like you have a lot of the throughput that a resto druid has, uh, and then you also have a lot of the offensive capabilities uh, that a disciplined priest has in a way. And I think Matt plays it in such like a great way. And yeah, their team just kind of looks unbeatable switching between RMP and uh, Rogue Mage Evoker at this point. The only thing I could really see beating them is like a mirror match. Um, we did see something really interesting. I know uh, I was very excited for uh, the Rep Paladin. I think that was the biggest surprise of the entire tournament was a rep paladin got tagged in and almost reverse swept um dragon lands roulette like seeing swapsy on that rep paladin and there was a lot of rep paladin enjoyers that were cheering for them um well, it was exciting for me I, I was really hoping that the rep paladin won uh, i really was hoping that the rep paladin won but unfortunately they weren't able to i don't know if rep paladin should really beat rogue mage uh, i think traditionally like Rogue, especially with an Arcane Mage, is like the absolute nightmare composition for Rets to deal with. There was no Mistweavers. In fact, there was, a, there was not a lot of, there was no of a lot of specs. Like what, what was not in the tournament? What did we not see at all? We saw zero Mistweavers. What else did we see nothing of? We saw no Boomies. We saw no Enhance. No Tanks, zero Tanks. Yes, no Brewmasters. We all know that. Uh, no MM Hunters. Did see BM, I think, and Survival. There was no of Athley Lock. There, I think we did see Destro and Demo, but no Affliction. We definitely saw Destro Thug played it. We didn't see any Devastation Evoker, so Devastation Evoker stocks went way down. Trill didn't even. Did he play it? I think Trill actually did play it, but they did not do well. So Devastation stocks are way down. I think he actually did play it in the open bracket. He did for sure. Uh, we didn't see any Outlaw Rogue. That's true. Um, no Frosty K. I think Mez may have played it, but maybe not. Uh, no Frosty K. But yeah, this is this is a surprising one for me. I think for Liquid, at least in North America, having that Devastation Evoker one shot with the DK was 
it was really, really good for them because they, they kind of pulled it off better than anyone else. They were the only ones running that comp. And the fact that that got nerfed, I think really hurt their team because that, that was the comp that they practiced the most. Uh, whenever you would watch Liquid stream and they were practicing, like the Devastation DK was the thing that they practiced the most and was kind of unique to them. And that getting nerfed, I think overall really hurt them. Um, and now they don't really have an answer for Rogue Mage, but they've been practicing Rogue Mage. And I think that's going to be the main adaptation going into cup number three is a lot of these teams are going to have to pick up the Assassination Rogue or perhaps figure out an answer. I, I, was, I was speaking with, um, I was playing actually last night off stream with uh, Blue Drew. And Blue Drew, you know, he has some takes on some things and, I don't agree with everything he said. Uh, one thing he suggested is that like survival hunter with an evoker is really good into assassination. I, I don't know if, if that's true. You could kind of see it with like the mending bandage as well as a cauterizing flame, but I, I don't really know if that's going to be, you know, what ends up breaking, taking it down, like evoker assassination thug or something like that, or like evoker thug cleave could maybe be good uh, into those comps. Uh, Liquid was doing really well with the Rogue Shadow Priest Provoker last night. Yeah, that's going to be another one, right? Like, that's what I'm saying. It just feels like everyone is scrambling to beat these two compositions, the Shadow Priest Rogue as well as the Rogue Mage. So these are the comps to beat. Can anyone figure out what to beat it? Uh, we've seen some get kind of close, like Thug, um, the Thug Cleave. Uh, it looked pretty good. Uh, I think that they're probably one of my favorite teams to play right now or to watch the Fiends, uh, Big Mix, Rat, and Zen. But the, the the interesting thing for them is it feels like in Europe, at least, they have like, there's a few teams that just can beat them with like the TSG or like the LED Demo. Um, I think the Thug Cleave is one of the only comps right now that actually feels like it's pretty solid um, into like the Shadow Priest Rogue and Rogue Mage meta. Everything else feels eh, I don't really know. My prediction for cup number three is that it's going to feel a lot like cup number two. I don't think we're going to be seeing any changes this week. I think if we were to see changes, uh, they would have already like been announced. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be very similar. Uh, I would I would guess that something's going to happen. Like probably changes will get announced this Friday, like they always do. Um, I don't really know what's going to be targeted for nerfs. Like uh, like what's going to be nerfed? I, I actually don't know. Probably just assassination. Is assassination the only thing that's OP? I, I'm not sure. I don't even know what they should do specifically to Assassination Rogue. I feel like there's a lot of different things they could do. They could go for their damage. They could go for their control. But I, I do get the feeling that if Assassination gets deleted, we're just going to have a new Kingpin and it's going to be Warrior. So I think if Assassination Rogue just gets gutted, we're just going to see new things like Warrior Mage, Warrior Shadow Priest, and those comps will like kind of really rise up. But I also do feel like Assassination Rogues in particular are holding down a lot of specs. Like, I, I really believe there's a lot of specs in the game that just can't function because of Assassination Rogues. And if they were, if there was no Assassination Rogues, like if Assassination was just deleted as a specialization, I actually feel like it would open up so many different compositions. I think Ellie Shaman are gonna get way better. Destro Locks would get way better. Demo Warlocks would get way better. Uh, things like Enhancement Shaman could even get a lot better. Moonkins could get way better. And the reason for that is Assassination Rogues just cut down a lot of like these hybrids healing, right? Like if you're a Moonkin and you frenzied regen and you get shivved, uh, it really doesn't help you out that much. But yeah, I think it should be, uh, you know, exciting cup number three. I think I uh, might guess would be cup number four is the most spicy of them all. But yeah, definitely a story of the assassination we're going out.